Howdy, and welcome into today's show. I'm so glad that you are here. Today's show is brought to you commercial free by all the generous donors to Forte Catholic. Thank you to all of those who have given to us this year. Thank you to all of those who have listened and supported the show. We really appreciate it. So, from me, my family, and the team here at Forte Catholic, Merry Christmas. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Listen and welcome in to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Schroll. That is Allison Sullivan. Hi, Taylor Schroll. Hey, it's nice to have you here in the well, water thanks. closet. <laughs> the water closet. Every, Such a happy place. It is. Every other co-host is is remote. Yeah. And like we've been working so hard to mm-hmm. like improve the audio quality mm-hmm. for the remotes and improve the video quality for remotes, mm-hmm. not just having everything go through Zoom. Mm-hmm. And it's so much easier with you because you're just uh, like, hey, come to my house and everything will work. Yeah, <laughs> I feel that. I, I like it when things are easy. So I have what might be the most revolutionary thought I've ever had in my entire life. Revolutionary? Revolution- revolutionary. Revolutionary. will change Christianity forever. Oh. And I- you're... Am I the first to hear? You are 100% yes! the first person to hear. Yes! I haven't told my wife. I was going to tell Father Anthony last night if he decided to play video games with me, but he spurned me. Punished. <laughs> so, That's what you get, Father so, Anthony. Um, cheese. Cheese? Yep. We're starting. Okay. We're starting with, with the in? word cheese. Yes, I'm okay? in. I'm just going to okay. list some words real quick. We've got okay. cheese. Cheese. Chat. Chat. Uh, why don't you say, pronounce the word C-H-A-S-E. Chase. Okay. Cheer, chest, chew, child, chick, chin, cheetah. C-H is pronounced ch. Uh I'm pretty sure, here we are on our Christmas show. Okay. I'm pretty sure his name is Jesus Chist. (laughs) Okay, but you know there's an R. Right, but C-H, no matter what, is always No, not if there's an R. When there's an R following, it's hard. Name another word that's C-H-R. That's not Christmas, because that's obvious. Chrism. That's a Jesus word. Hold on. Well, I need a minute. I d- looked at dictionaries last night to make sure that I was right. About Cricket. This. That's a CR. Exactly. I know. Stop it. I'm thinking. Exactly. Stop it. So I think I think either English has got it wrong. Like we look at like Kairos from the Greek. It's mm-hmm. a K-A. Mm-hmm. And then we turned it into cheese. Okay. You're trying. Are you trying to misspell Jesus's name? Are you trying to change the spelling of Jesus's name? Not That's what Jesus, I'm asking. But Christ, I think we either need to change how we say it or change how we spell it. This is not going to catch on, Taylor. I'm it, just I am warning you now. This is a flop. Well, I am telling you <laughs> that my life, everything that I do in my life is tell people that they're wrong, Mm -hmm. offer a solution, and then nothing changes. So what's new about this? I am going to think of a (laughs) C-H-R word in the middle of the night tonight. I'm going to spring forth. Chicken, children, cheeseburger, chili, chocolate, chop, You have clearly done your research. Church. Oh, man. (laughs) Uh, Sure, chapter. Revolutionary, though. I I mean, that's a really strong intro for a small little R. Once you have heard this, Mm-hmm. You are responsible for it. Yeah, it's just like oh, uh, it's a holy. De- Remember when we had holy depths of obligation? Remember when we had to go to church? Yeah. a few months ago. Yeah, you know? yeah. and now <laughs> back before twenty twenty. Okay. But like, it, it's one of those things that like oh, if you for- if you genuinely forgot mm-hmm. about the holy day of obligation, mm-hmm. it's not on your conscience because you didn't know. Mm-hmm. Well, now you know that it is wrong in English to pronounce Christ mm-hmm. as Christ. Mm-hmm. It is Christ. Christ. Wow, you're really right. I'm going through all the vowels because it's not going to be an A and it's not going to be a, I mean, a U or an A. I think, wow. I don't know how I feel about you being right. K R I S. That's the revolutionary part. (laughs) (laughs) Taylor was right, and it only took a few moments into the show. So, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's cold outside, Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs> hey, as a, as a larger man, do you... Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Do you like the cold? You probably I, like it. I hate the cold. I hate it. I hate Hell it. is cold, I'm certain. 100%. I, I, I mean, like, fire and brimstone was lost in translation, like, in the Greek or something. Right. Hell it was pronounced is cold. with a C-H, and we all got really confused. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, okay, so like, I've been super into like Viking stuff recently. So like, okay, Thor, like, t- TV shows, video games, everything that I've been doing is around like Vikings and Viking lore and like, okay. Norse mythology. Okay, Niflheim mm. is is their hell. 
and it's froze a frozen and it's tundra frozen. and i'm like it's terrible i think they got that part right yeah <laughs> you know? right yeah i <laughs> agree we're supposed to look at what's true uh, true good and beautiful in other religions i think they got that part right yeah i think the fire and brimstone preachers got it wrong yeah so it's cold i'm in a festive hat mary tristmas mary tristmas Tri- that's hard to say isn't it i think well there we should, it is it, that's the k r i s t m a s merry christmas yeah. It would even be X better if we had the X. <laughs> that would be oh, everybody hates Mary Xmas, right? You're gonna get lots of Xmas emails on this. Xmas is closer to the correct pronunciation than C H. <laughs> yeah. Well, R.I.P. Your inbox. You're you're gonna hear about this from the people. No, no one cares. Everyone's just gonna tell me I'm wrong about everything. <laughs> normal. <laughs> what do I care? Uh, send all your hate mail to Allison at ForteCatholic.com. Well, you're leaving me here in my festivity alone. I tried to get you to wear a Santa hat, and you would have none of it. Well, it's hard to celebrate Christmas whenever I just found out my whole life has been alive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, it's getting better. Hold on, because I, so try, try. Is the eye still long? That's the question. If you're so, gonna mix it up, does the eye stay so long? Ky- Kairos, Ky, Ky I, Cry, Tr- Tristmas, Tristmas. Yep. See, I keep putting that T at the end too. I don't know what that's about. Anyway. Like you're, you're like it's a mast. Mast. Like the- mast. Trist mast. Trist mast. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make that face too. Trist mast. <laughs> if you're not watching on the YouTube, you're missing out. You're missing <laughs> out on on Allison's <laughs> weird faces. You're missing out on the monkey on her head. <laughs> Merry Trist mast. A sock monkey. Sock yeah. monkey. Okay. So that like I have nothing better than that for today's show. That was okay. The perfect. Lead We've peaked. It was the lead material. So it's all downhill hill from here. Um. So the other day. I, <laughs> last week's was wild. Yeah. If you listened to last week's show, it was crazy. You you said that you listened to it and you were like worried about me when you got here. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I'm like, we, yeah. I didn't know what I was going to be walking into. I'm I'm doing great now. I've recovered. Uh, update. Most important update. After two months and two days of living on online shopping, I ordered my Xbox Series X <gasps> and it's coming. I'm getting it on Saturday. Oh, my gosh. At least We're never going to see you again. Well... You only see me once a month now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not near enough, Taylor. Wow. Okay, so I'll just drop by. Like people are gonna order you food. That's you're never gonna leave Dash. the house. That's DoorDash. Not new. <laughs> well, I know, but you're gonna gonna quit taking like lovely walks around your neighborhood. Oh, that that ended when it got cold. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fine. Well, then play on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, my my entertainment will just be more entertaining now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. F- I mean, maybe I'll play more for like the first few days, but then I mean, like I have a life. Like, I have what specifically are you looking forward to? You know, so there are a couple of topics that you and I are Venn diagrams. It's not overlapping at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them is around this topic, whether it's video games or Marvinger or whatever. Marvinger, mm-hmm. Mar- Marvel's Avengers. Did you just put those two things together? Yeah, Tristamus. <laughs> So I would like to know specifically, if you don't want to spend any time on this, we can just do like, you know, scale of one to 10 or like a sentence. But what is it that you're so excited about? So everything will look better, Mm -hmm. play better. It'll Mm -hmm. be faster. I won't have, there's no load times. So like, you know, like how like, it's it's like when you upgrade a computer after seven years. That's Mm -hmm. essentially what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be faster. It's going to look better. Mm -hmm. uh, And I will be better than my friends because the frame rate will be better. Oh. Which you don't know what that means, but you don't have to. It's okay, okay, but you're playing someone that does not have the machine you have. 100%. That's the, like, it's one of those things that, like, I was I was one of the So people. you're going to be a champion and a hero. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I'll be the enemy because I'll be beating all my friends even okay. worse than I already did. Sure, sure. Oh. So I'm going, like, I was in the, like, we were all in this together. No one could get an Xbox Series S, nobody, or X, nobody could get a PlayStation 5. And, like, the moment that I celebrated that I got it, I became public enemy number one. Sure. Like, there were two people that were like, I'm genuinely happy for no, you. No, I'm sorry. Are, are they, there's not very many of them? It's, they're very hard to get. They're hard to get. Yeah. And you just happened to get one. Did. did. you have to camp out somewhere? No. So, here's the thing. <laughs> Long story short. They would like, like, they were like, because of COVID, we're not selling anything in our stores. You have to buy them online. And then you will come to our store to pick it up. Which... We've talked about COVID a ton on this. Uh, a lot of it makes sense. Like, wear a mask out in public. Perfectly fine. 
don't buy things from our store, but then once you buy them, come to our store, doesn't make sense. Okay. But they were, so essentially it was all. But are they just trying to limit the fist fights to get them? I think so. Okay. Which is sad to me because I would have had one much earlier. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm sorry. Proceed. So essentially, bots, people created bots that would buy the game. Like literally, they would oh, come sure. out at 8 o'clock. Yeah. And these bots are faster than humans. Right. I would try to buy it at 8, eight o'clock and three seconds. Yeah. By 8 o'clock and three seconds, they were it's gone. It's gone. The they sold the bot people. Uh huh. Like the bots like they bought them for these people called uh-huh. scalpers. They sold 60,000 oh, of the consoles my gosh. in the last month. Now, because I think you're a wizard. To me, you are a bot person. <laughs> you are not a bot person. I'm not, I, I, am, I am a bot person, but I am not a bot. Uh, I'm still uh, not full robot. They're still fast. Okay. Yeah. But you can't pretend to be a robot and get your... Okay. Okay. No. Um, right. But, uh, so essentially they were like, you know, you can't go buy them in the store. Which, like, the whole thing, they were like, we can't seem to figure out how to stop these bots. I'm like, have you tried selling them in your stores? <laughs> like, <laughs> that would stop the bots, you know? Like, it's ridiculous. Cue the fist fights. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I finally got that. And so like this week, there have been a lot of things similar to last week, just not qu- the lows weren't as low, except yeah. for one. Like my daughter, we thought yeah. she broke her arm the other day. Ugh. We had to take her to the hospital, like literally like, to the touch, like literally couldn't touch her, like moving her body, like, like even picking her whole body mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm, she was it, like, yeah. like that moved her arm enough like, sure. that it hurt. Uh, so that was hard. Just mm-hmm. like being around a kid that like is crying and like it's one of those things that like I had to. You're make helpless. Her to ho- it's hospital. terrible. Yeah. It was like at some point I'm making her cry. Yeah. You know, like it's it was just hard. It's a hard morning, so uh, we don't have to get into all that. We don't have to be as depressing as last week. But essentially, she's fine. It was it was a sprain. They didn't see any. They thought it was a fracture. There wasn't a fracture. She's doing much better now. Good. Uh, she got some hydrocodone and was super loopy, which mm-hmm. was fun. We have videos of that that will be going up <laughs> on social media. Oh, and, in accordance with this uh, Christmas week, everybody's getting a <laughs> present of seeing my three-year-old a little loopy. Um, but so like that day, the so like I woke up at 8.30, right, mm-hmm. right before 9. Best Buy was going to have X- Xbox Series X's at 9. By 9, I'm already in panic mode trying to help daughter go to the oh hospital. wow so i miss i missed it, you missed fine. that day yeah. i wasn't upset about it it's one sure of sure yeah. i didn't think i was gonna get one anyway i've been literally online for two and a half two months yeah. but then we get home uh we go to chick-fil-a you know she eats her chick-fil-a nuggets with one hand it was so cute <laughs> <laughs> she's whole, drinking her whole two uh, percent milk with one hand like i don't know it's just super funny um still loopy <laughs> which was i don't know it was great uh, she's all healed now, which is crazy. It's been three days. Like, yeah, if wow. I sprain like I, like uh, two months ago, I hurt myself, and I'm kind of I know, right? Better. Yes, you know, yes. like <laughs> yeah. If I sprained my ankle, I'd be out for Just, three weeks. They're little like rubber sacks, so resilient. These yeah, little... that's very pro life. <laughs> 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 that's what you're getting emails about. <laughs> <laughs> everyone hates everyone on Forte Catholic. So, uh, but I get home. And at around three o'clock, like I finally start like calming down. Like my blood pressure is going all morning. I'm trying yeah. to like, yeah. like outwardly I was calm, but inside yes, I was like, yes, you know, yes, yes. dying. Frazzled, yeah. And I find I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go into Best Buy, and that's what I got. So like another of these up and down. Like literally, I spent all morning. Where do we go? Like our, oh, the other thing, our doctor dropped our insurance like yesterday, and we didn't oh. know. So we had to like, where do we take our choke child oh, that is broken? Gosh. So it's just crazy. And finally got the Xbox, and now I'm happy. Um, but then <laughs> something else happened that I think it was that night. Who knows? I didn't sleep well those two days. Somewhere last week, uh, a friend of mine, uh, you kn- who you know, Beck- Rebecca Landry, you know her. Yes, yes. Uh, she's been a friend of mine for a long time. She's actually the person that makes all the like episode images for this show. So if you ever like those images, that's, that's her. That's Rebecca. So uh, her wedding has been scheduled for January 9th. For mm-hmm. a very long time, uh-huh. because that's what you schedule weddings out out, yeah. out for a while. Yeah, and she she sent us an invitation like you know six months ago, and of course I didn't RSVP because I forgot. Yeah, and I'm b- b- a bad human. You don't strike me as the RSVPing type. You said peeing. <laughs> 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 that was silly. <laughs> uh, I just turned RSVP into a verb, and that is humorous. Go ahead. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I, I forgot to RSVP. So like on Saturday, she's like, hey, are you and Sam coming? Yeah. And we're like, absolutely. One of our closest friends. I've worked with her for five years. She's great. Yes. And th- like the 
an hour after I had like confirmed my R's. For oh people, no. I get a phone call. Yeah. From this church where I've led a retreat for them for the last two years. And I like, of course, like we've all had a very, our, our events have been limited, yes. which means my funds have been very limited yep. this year. Yeah. So I could use, I, 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 I could use the money. Yeah. I would love to do a retreat in person because I've only like I last weekend was my first like in person event yeah. that I was running, like yeah. where I got booked for it. It was amazing. I love talking to human people about Jesus. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> 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 I didn't talk about that in the talk. That would have been distracting. Uh and now here comes the mantrance with Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God, Taylor Schroll. <laughs> <sighs> uh so <laughs> they they call me. And this is like late December. Mid to late December. And they're like, hey, can you do our confirmation retreat on January 9th? Mm. And I'm like, I look, I pull up my calendar and I see Becca's wedding. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. One of my closest friends' weddings. And this event that would pay me good money mm-hmm. that I could use. Mm-hmm. And no matter what decision I make, I'm going to be upset. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know? right. So uh. after this year of terribleness, and everybody's like, it's going to be tw- better in 21, I, 2021. I'm here to tell you, 2021 is going to be just as tough. There's never <laughs> any magic wand ever. Okay, but what do you, so what'd you decide? I, 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 I sat with it for like an, an hour or two, and I was like, man. Is there any way to do a little of both? Right, and I thought about it, and there wasn't. Like, it was too far away. Yeah, like, I was yeah, like, you know, maybe yeah. I could miss the church part and just make the party. That yeah. would seem on brand for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, there wasn't. So I, 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 uh, I called the or I texted the lady back, and I was like, I can't do it, but here's a friend of mine that can, and she never called it. <laughs> so it's like whatever. But I, I decided to go to the wedding. Really? I did. You seem wow, very surprised. I am. Do you have thirteen hundred dollars? I can have because that's <laughs> what I said. That's <laughs> wow. Yeah. How'd you so do that, Rebecca? D- I know you don't listen, but if anyone knows Rebecca, someone better tell her this because I can't. Because that would be prideful. Okay. But if you people tell her, it's fine. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll make sure it gets around. I'm not buying. We her have a our gift. ways. It cost me thirteen hundred dollars to be at that wedding. Wow. I'm not buying her a gift. I'm proud of you. That's interesting. Yeah. Am I proud of me? I'm not sure. I, You're a really good friend. You're a really good friend. I feel like it's one of those things that you, you, you're just not going to regret that. You know, you could look back. Well, maybe in February when I can't buy groceries, maybe I will. I know. $1,300 <laughs> goes fast. And then, you know, oh, wow. That's interesting. It's hard. I don't envy that decision. Yeah. I, I, I didn't enjoy the decision, but. It is what it is. Like, ultimately, I need to go to the wedding. Weddings only happen once. Well, usually for most people. Actually, on average, they happen a lot more than that. They're only supposed to happen once. And I think for Becca, she's a a great girl. And she's marrying a great guy. Okay, well, I'm going to start praying for God to provide. ForteCatholic.com slash donate if you want to answer Alice's (laughs) prayers. Tax-deductible gift to help me... Recoup the losses. Such a faith builder for all of us. A good friend. This is what I get for being a good person. Every time I'm a good person, I don't get rewarded. Something gets taken from me. Oh, okay. All right. There, there it is. There it is. Come on, God, do your thing. I, ju- I feel like this, this is where He works best. Is with your defiance. In the water closet. No, t- <laughs> no, whipping your butt. Yes, in the water closet. <laughs> well, Jesus don't make Christ, me take you to the Jesus water Christ closet. Christ is going to whip my butt in the <laughs> water closet. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, you're talking. <laughs> well, I mean, it's talking. I'm not talking. I'm not talking right now. Welcome back to Fort Day Catholic. I am Taylor Stroll. Allison Sullivan, I think, might have taken the same things my daughter got at the hospital because she is. Wild. I do have my own little video, you know. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen that. You video. liked that. That was. I liked it with all of my accounts. That that entertained you. I'm glad. It was very fun. So we're actually going to talk about you. Okay. Last week I didn't let Liv say a word until the third segment. Now we're gonna we're gonna let you do, go second just to confirm. That I like you better than her because oh, that's gosh. all she believes. Well, no matter what I say. That's. What do you mean? No matter what you say. What do you say? I. Every, <laughs> you should know that. I don't think. I don't think the co-hosts know this. My favorite is always the person that I'm with. I love that answer. I think it's accurate and good. If you can't be with the one you love, love the oh, one. Oh, see, I thought you were being sincere. I am. 
I believe you. My favorite is always the person. I get that. Because people ask, like, what's your favorite stage of parenting? And it's like, whatever I'm doing at the time. Oh, no, definitely three years ago. (laughs) (laughs) I do love a two-year-old. Like, uh, all the um, really exaggerated emotions and then such little language to express it is just a great time. It's entertaining. That's why people like this show. And then the big (laughs) belly. Oh, well. (laughs) (laughs) And the big head. (laughs) Allison is is deceased now. She's no longer with us. Okay. Anyways. So, no, no, I get that. Like, whoever you're with, whoever you're laughing with in that moment is your favorite. That makes a lot of sense to me. I think it's a perfect answer. And and, And it keeps me out of trouble, which we talked about in the the break as well. I don't mind if you like somebody better than me, by the way. (laughs) I think that's just fine. Okay, if we're really going to rank them, Anthony's first. (laughs) Yeah, we've we've already had this conversation. Who is, like, just answer this question. Who are the two people on the board? What? Oh. The two people on the board before the Catholic are Father Anthony and... Taylor Schroll? What do you mean on the board? What are you talking about? You. You. Oh. It's you. I know. No, you didn't. Yes, I do. <laughs> I kn- t- Yes, I do. I feel very confident in our relationship, Taylor. This is what I'm saying. Good line. And it's okay if you like somebody better than me. It's fine. It's good. It's probably appropriate. <laughs> you're my favorite because you're here. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked about parenting and family, which okay, is a perfect yeah, segue right. into what's going on yeah, yeah, yeah. at your household. Everybody hears about what's going on at my house, but uh, you okay. essentially, like we've talked about this this before, so, like right when we started talking about you being on TikTok and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like John Blevins has always been the most like famous, most popular person, mm-hmm. like on this show, right, 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 and. Like Anthony was next, and then he just plummeted whenever he deleted his Twitter. Yeah, and then you, like, you became second mm-hmm. whenever Anthony left. Mm-hmm. But then once TikTok started, mm-hmm. like, I was texting with John a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and he was like, "No way! Like, there's no way that he's like, there's no way that you, Allison, have more views on TikTok than he does." Because like, he has a famous brother. He has does a lot of really popular things, yeah. especially in regards to his brother. Yeah, or like the Detroit Lions, like they share his stuff too. Yep. You get like 18 times as many views on your it's podcast as he does. You're getting millions of views on TikTok. Yeah, and people recognize us in public, so which is crazy to me. Like, it's completely bizarre. Um, okay, so I feel like we should back up a little bit. First of all, here I want to – actually, I want to back up from the backup, um, which is – I December 13th, <laughs> 1947. A young woman was born named Allison Sullivan. 47. Okay. Um, I feel like I love and hate you that we cool. are talking about this. Always. I'm always holding both, awesome. Taylor. But I, that we're talking I like about that we this. we had to go way back to talk about this. Yeah, My well, hatred for you started years because ago. Because you know, <laughs> you know that I don't want to talk about this, and you know that I will talk about it with you. Okay. So, similarly, I was on this Facebook Live thing that was happening and it's stressful because I was talking about adoption I was talking about family and by the way like if you think you're tough there is nothing tougher than women in a mommy war okay so I was insecure about how all of what I was saying was being received because it was about parenting it was about adoption it's obviously tender you know to my life and very specific and and you can't gauge anything it's like you're putting stuff out there and you don't know how it's being received so I was anxious is the point so I let the host of the show know I feel really anxious about that. And she's, you know, kind of trying to manage my feelings. And so she calls a mutual friend of ours and was like, "Ah, I don't know what to do. Allison's anxious about what just happened. And the person that she called goes, call Taylor, have Taylor listen to to it. I was literally about to think when you said she called a mutual friend, I'm like, you know, it was me, right? (laughs) No, no, no. The mutual friend. No, this is the advice of the mutual friend. Call Taylor, have Taylor listen to it. Tell Taylor to call her and tell her she did a good job. That's all it'll take. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) here's what I love about this is that, first of all, the wisdom of that person to know that, like, you're going to make me feel better about talking about weird things. Okay. So this is a weird thing. It's totally a weird thing, but I will talk about it with you. Okay. So... I liked the part where I was getting complimented. Can we stay there? You were, yes. You, you're you just a good, safe place for me, Taylor. Okay, so TikTok happened. We got on TikTok because we wanted to stay friends during quarantine. It was like, let's make funny videos. We were doing you nothing. To stay friends with who? With my family. Okay. Okay, gotcha. with my children. <laughs> yeah. So let's, you know, do these funny little videos. And we were just kind of experimenting with it. Did not think 
anything about it. Literally the one that went viral took us four seconds. Okay. And so we go, we're, we're like working on another video and then Silas hands me the phone and was like, mom, this is crazy. And so it's like doubling, What's the doubling with six zeros after it, mom. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's going crazy, which was fun and exciting, but like, still we didn't think anything of it. Three days later, JLo starts following us. And then it was like, well, I mean, if JLo might see some stuff, let's at least try to make it right. decent. Right. And so, <clears throat> so we start putting a little bit of time and effort into the things that we're doing. I like to write little stuff like that. You know, that's fun. And, and the kids are, we're really into it. They're all adorable like to look at they're just like physically pleasing people you know they're just cute and and so we would you know put these little things together one thing leads to another and we have a quarter of a million followers so I still to me TikTok seems a little silly so I didn't think anything of that 100% it's why I can't get into it <sighs> I don't get it I know but it it's here's here's what I love about it there's a really organic reach because it just is what it is. You put it out and people either watch it till the end or they don't. And so it, I, I love that it's not about, um, you can't create friends. You don't have any friends. People either watch the end, your video to the end or they don't, or they scroll. And so that's what kind of determines, you know, if it's going to stay in the FYP. Okay. So flip. Yeah. So then simultaneously what was happening is that Silas has always, my oldest has always asked me, how do you get to be in a commercial? And I have always politely said, I don't know because I don't know. But during quarantine, it was like, I find where they're filming a commercial <laughs> and you attack the set. <laughs> and you have to just say, this is my domain now. Pick the other you kid out of the way. And just start smiling very loudly, as is happening in the Sullivan family. <laughs> no, you put on <laughs> glitter. Like, you put on glitter in sequence, and you just go show up with some moves. So I have always said, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But during quarantine and COVID, I had just, my, my world had become so much smaller, and it was affecting the way that I was listening to the people that what? I loved. Yes. I heard that. And there were, when he asked it again, you it was like. You smiled really loud. I'm go awesome. I know. Gosh, I'm such a loud smiler. You are a quiet smiler, but you look like Chucky when you do it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, turns out there was an audition in our town. Let's go to this audition and let's just see what happens. They scoop him up. They're like, oh, my gosh, we want him and we want him now. And so I was like, that sounds like a commercial. I thought, yes, it does. <laughs> it's my Silas and I <laughs> see, want him See, we're naturals. <laughs> and so I thought that this was all kind of for something specific, but it wasn't. It was to be a part of a team that was going to LA that was going to be put in front of a whole lot of agents. We go back for a second interview and they say, this is kind of where I think that that was all kind of background because this is where I think. Good. I'm get, glad we're getting. I know. Something. Right. And a little interesting, but they were like, so why didn't you audition? And I was like, because I'm an old lady and I'm doing a lot of other things. And they Beautiful were like, well, I know. And I, I even like being old. I've told you a million times I wish I was born 40. So I'm not trying to be 25. I'm not trying. You can't be trying... much older than born in 1943. But Four... <laughs> you said 47. So. Wow. Anyways, I know it's, I know it's a trap, I tell you. Glad my uh, random <laughs> jokes are getting fact checked. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Don't you pull a fast one on me. You just tried to make me four years older than I already was. <laughs> That's what you're mad about. Not me saying you were born in 1949. Seven. Jeez. <laughs> that was on purpose. It's the joke. Okay, so um, anyways, long story short, they were like, we I like really- you just scratched your forehead under the monkey's mouth. That was, <laughs> it looked like you were reaching into his mouth. <laughs> Is it in place? I can't tell because you won't let me look at myself. It looks great. So, um, yeah, so they were like, we really think that, that you would do great. Here's the point. I have always wanted to co-star with Kurt Cameron. I have always wanted oh, to be. So you think you're a bad actor. And awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right in. I want to be in cheesy Christian movies. I've always wanted to do that. That is the correct pronunciation I, of cheesy. Che <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy. Um, so I love that this that there's there's really something freeing about chasing old lady dreams 
not caring if I'm any good at it, just having fun with it. I feel like when it comes to exploring or learning or gaining a skill, it's so easy to look around and be like, there's so many people already doing that and they're doing it better. But what if our creativity, (laughs) (laughs) but what if our creativity wasn't stifled by what everyone else is doing? What if our creativity was really just about creating because it just has its own rhythms. It has its own, I don't know. I'm just having so much fun doing something that I never thought that I would be able to do. And it is the most freeing thing. I feel like actors are always accused of, of being selfish or self-involved. It is the most selfless thing you can do because it is <laughs> it, it in the, in the moment, in that creative moment, I don't know. I what think, comes after, I, I agree with you. Going to a retreat and getting paid and going to a wedding instead. It's pretty <laughs> selfless. I do agree with that. <laughs> Okay, but, but second. Like, well, I can act in an adult diapers commercial. No, That's the best thing I can do. Second is the empathetic listening that is required what? to really do a scene well. Because it is about, it is not about you. It is not about the people that may or may not be watching. It is only about the person in front of you. And it is so completely liberating to do this thing that I've always thought that I could be good at and never had the courage to do and wouldn't have unless... Three women sitting across a desk from me said, we really think you need to do this. And so here we are. We're headed to L.A. Here's my thought. I I think you think this is new for you. But we've talked about where you went to high school. We talked about how you grew up. We talked about your college a little bit over your course of being here. Okay. I think you've been acting your whole life. (laughs) (laughs) I know a lot of people that would agree with you. I am quite the drama queen in my home. I think since I think as you've gotten older. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, hit that it, you made it to the new millennium, which we didn't think after 1944. <laughs> <But> <laughs> you did it. Could have gone either way. And, and, uh, <laughs> I was like, "What number have I not used?" Yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, you made it here, and now you're going for the dream. And I'm yeah, going. it's so you're, it's you're really like, fun. Have you made the Los Angeles trip yet? In June, so we go in June. Okay, and we are going to have a showcase. And it's in front of a lot of agents. And so we'll just kind of see what happens. And of course, this could be just a good story, you know, to share on Instagram. And I want to take everyone with us because I don't like to do anything alone. Um, but in it, but it could be a it's, neat opportunity. It's you and your son. Yes. Together. Yes, it's the both of us. Because, like, you yeah. changed your TikTok account. And yeah. he's just as popular, if not more popular than oh, you. Oh, way more. Which, like, you finally feel how I, I do hosting this show. <laughs> Being the <laughs> least popular person on my own. I thing. surrendered a long time ago. I'm totally fine with it. Uh, you know, it, th- there's funny things because the bigger a platform gets, the less of a person you become. And so there's, a, you know, that's you been. You have seemed less of a person. <laughs> that's been really interesting to navigate. It's like, oh, people don't have feelings once a quarter of a million people are watching. But So like you and your son, like you're going to play his grandma in like Transformers 8 or something. Wow. That one actually hurt. Good. <laughs> That one I, actually did it hurt. Only took me the actually, whole no, hold on. That did happen in a TikTok where um, I was pretending to be like this really perfect mom with a plate of cookies. And someone was like, oh, I wish my grandma was still alive. <laughs> I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you know they did that just to mess with you. I don't think they did, which is sad. 100% they did. It was <sighs> me on my birthday account. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but uh, you know he obvi- i'm managing the account it, silas doesn't you know i mean he has input into what we do and you know the videos that we make but he's not looking at any comments or anything i mean tiktok can be a really interesting place so i i am happy for you thank you but there is there are some facts that if you just put these facts together yeah it makes it interesting okay so here's an older person Doing something that is new and exciting. Mm-hmm. She is in control. Mm-hmm. Her son is a child actor. Mm-hmm. We've heard this story plenty of times. It didn't turn sure. out too well. <laughs> well, it's interesting because that was the main conversation that we had in that second interview is I do not feel at all naive to the effects of being extremely adored or extremely rejected. You know, the the extremes of both of those have a lot of effect on a fragile ego. And... Um, I like that you pointed at yourself when you said that. (laughs) 
ego. <laughs> Maybe. Um, well, and that's the thing is that I, I think that there's a lot of freedom that kind of, I keep using that word and because that is what these last couple of months have felt like for me in 1942. 42. No. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, just th- the freedom that comes with I am 40 whatever years old. I don't care. 84? 77. Are you guessing my year? You're guessing are, 83. Are you no, accusing saying, me of being an 83 no. year old or thinking yeah, I'm if born, you were born in 80? 1947, you're 83 years old. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I don't do math in public. We've talked about this. Anyways, I do not care at 40 years old what anybody thinks about what I'm creating. I cared a lot when I was Silas's age. And I'm telling you, it is miraculous how little he cares. He is, he's not. He doesn't even look to see what the numbers are. He does not care. So anyways, I've, I've gotten some advice from some really close people that are in the industry and, and then obviously the people that I was talking to. I talked to you a little bit too, but just, um, you know, a lot of people were like, I would highly advise against it except for you and your family, (laughs) just because I think we're really involved. I think that we, um, we talk about everything. I'm, you know, I'm doing all the, he doesn't see any, I don't know. Anyways, if anything goes wrong, pray for us. Yeah. Well, I have, I have found the limits of that very quickly being pregnant. I have questions. He's an infectious disease doctor. I ask him about being pregnant and he's like, I don't know. (laughs) Well, I'm glad he doesn't think your baby is an infectious (laughs) disease. What is attacking your body? I don't know. So just like that, <laughs> really? I That's don't know. Talks. Yeah, That's strange. Did you hear my smile? I did. <laughs> did you hear mine? No, Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> Chucky. So uh, I'm happy for you. Thanks. You're, you're like, in, we're, we're here we are on our Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be celebrating Christmas, but all I can think about mm. is Holy Week. Allison, remember me when oh you gosh, go what? off to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be oh, super famous. Isaac, yes. And like, I just don't want your head to get too big whenever you do. It will no commercials. longer fit and into Silas the sock monkey in... hat. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hat doesn't fit either. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You have to start all the way over? Yes. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I'm Taylor Schroll, and Allison Sullivan is broken. Now over to Todd with the weather. I, I, for some reason, I felt like we were in the middle of a newscast doing that. Todd! I wh- don't think I have ever, like, really annoyed you on your show, but it just happened. Well, Or, or you've covered it up every other time. Oh, yeah. Usually I'm see much better at masking it, but I'm not wearing a mask right now. So the only time I haven't masked things. Really I'm sorry. Time. I'm really bad. I'm sorry. It's all better. So Fixed. I, uh, I have been... Uh, I have not been back to my home parish for Mass. Okay. The parish I grew up in was also the parish I worked in, and it was not the greatest of experiences, and I didn't leave on the greatest of okay. terms. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it was just kind of weird to go That's back. That's complicated, it yeah. Like, it was super awkward every time I went. And, like, you're, you're supposed to feel at home at church. I didn't for a long time. Yeah. And then I've, it, it, but, for, like, it's been long enough. We've been going to another parish. Like, they worked at two parish. Good thing I worked at two parishes when I lived there. Mm-hmm. Hooray. So we've been going to the other one. Mm-hmm. Every time we returned home. But then finally I was like, you know what? Like, it's been a long time. And, like, it's been a strange year. And hard spiritual year, too. So I was just like, sure. I want to go back to, like, where my spiritual life started. Yeah. Like, literally where hmm. I first started caring about hmm. Jesus. Literally where I learned. Like, yeah. I literally grew up in this hmm. place, uh, both as a kid and then, like, my first ministry job. Like so I, you were kind of craving that. I was. So we, we went back home this last weekend. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing an event at the other parish. I okay. spoke. I, I mentioned it earlier. Spoke, led worship. It was really cool. Uh, and I was like, I want to go to Mass at my parish. And like, we always went to the 11 o'clock Mass since, let's see, ni- uh, when did we move there? 1991. Ever since 1991, our family's been going to the 11 o'clock Mass. So I show up at 10.50, 10.55, and I, I walk in. To the church and like because of COVID, like the church, they have like the uh, 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 like overflow in the hall, mm-hmm. and like that's where my old office was for the, when I was the youth minister. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, okay, like, I, but I walk in, it's like ten fifty, ten fifty five, and I walk in, and there's there's always been a nine thirty mass, and then like they're they're like still in the midst, like the middle of communion, mm-hmm. like, and I'm like, this is weird, like the nine thirty mass is going really late, like there's a new priest, maybe they're doing something special for Advent or whatever. And like you know, sometimes mass goes a little bit longer than an hour. 
But I walk in, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Something's wrong. Something's very wrong here. Mm-hmm. So I pull up the, the website, and for the first time in at least 25 years, they're like, no 11 o'clock mass. It's now at 10. Wow. So I didn't get to go to mass. Like, my experience at this church huh. that I desperately wanted to reconnect with my spiritual roots was... No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did God changed. do that? Interesting. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So it's just this weird thing where I was like, I was literally like looking forward to waiting for this, this moment. Mm-hmm. Like for like a week, I was looking forward to it mm-hmm. and then it just didn't happen. Now, are you the type that is looking for meaning in that? Or are you the type that's like, I didn't read a website. Big deal. There's the, there's, I'm the type that's just like, <laughs> after the week I had last week that I was like, what is going on? Like, yeah. why is nothing going right? Yeah. Hmm. And, and, like, it was one of those things, like, it's not my fault. Like, there's literally no other masses after yeah. that. So, like, I missed mass for the day, which, whatever. Like, you're not you're, you're, you're here, and I think everywhere in the United States, it's not, like, a mortal sin to miss mass. And even if I did it by accident, it wouldn't be, like, a mortal sin to miss mass. But it's like, I I, I, I desired to go to mass, right. which is rare. <laughs> which yeah. I, I usually go a lot of, out of obligation. And then I kind of enjoy it when I'm there. But I've never had this, sure, like, right. yeah. when everybody, when they came back from COVID, they're like, I hungered for the Eucharist. And I'm like, I hungered for Sonic. Yeah. You know, like, like it just yeah. wasn't the same for me. Mm. But then I finally had this hunger, and it was uh, not quenched. It was put out immediately. Yeah, that's interesting. That's really interesting. I would think that maybe... I, want, I, I don't know. I think that sometimes desires are maybe put off or put on hold to solidify the desire. Is that a true the desire? It's 100% gone now. It's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it had its chance and it blew it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, but n- no, that's not completely true. Because I think I'll still go back mm-hmm. when we go home for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like cr- our Christmas mass. So I went and did this event. And they were like, hey, can you also sing for Christmas? Like, we want our choirs to not sing at all. Can you do it? I'm like, sure. Wow. <laughs> so, which is my dream because I don't like working with other people. Like, <laughs> when it comes to music stuff, <laughs> like, oh, I can, yeah. Uh-huh. I just want to do my thing and mm-hmm. it's so much easier. Mm-hmm. Like, can you practice with these people that ha- have no pitch? No, no I don't no, want to. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks. So, I'm going to be playing for a Christmas mass in at St. Mary's in Freeport. Uh, but I think I'm also going to go to like, a Sunday mass or something because fr- uh, Christmas is on Friday. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go to Sunday mass at this church. So I guess it's not completely gone. Yeah, but it was really deflating. Yeah, this story isn't finished yet. I feel like there's, there's. Oh, well, I'm glad it's not finished yet because we're only five minutes into the story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the coming of full circle, like of your life, there's there's more to this story. Sometime I like in it. My life. And I by the way, I'm church. invested now, so yeah, I'm gonna need to know what happens with this Good. parish. Okay, yeah, Good. I care. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, ironically enough, like that night, uh, I, it was one of the, like if you've been to like an XLT, it's a pretty similar thing. So it's like I welcomed everybody, spoke on waiting and hope for thirty minutes, and then we transitioned into like praise and worship and adoration, uh, and then the, the priest like gave this cool little speech at the end. It was really, it was just really neat. It was just really neat to like be back. It was one of those things where I was like I felt at home because I was like literally like at my parents' house right. where I grew up at this parish that I worked at. Like I, I felt at home in that way, but it was also like just being like just doing the ministry that God has called me to do with my life that I haven't been able to do for months. Uh, it was just nice to like feel at home leading people in worship, standing in front yeah. of people with the microphone. It was yeah. just like, like that's what I was made to do. And yeah. I haven't been able to do it as much. You know? I've had some similar experiences. I don't think we talked about this last time, um, but I was questioning, I think that when, when quarantine and, and COVID happened, which I know, yeah, anyway, I feel like when that happened, everyone's trying to put their stuff out, you know, and it was like all of that output became really satiating, like became really overwhelming. And so there was something about my response that kind of stiff armed all of that and didn't want to um, be a part of it somehow. It made me Only feel going on TikTok rebellious. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, it was like, I need a break from, you know, everyone, you know, pushing. And, and I, I, I don't want that to sound critical because I was, I felt it myself too. I felt the anxiety of not producing and it's it like, made, I need to produce. It and made then me mad. Cause I was just like, why don't you people just listen to what I've been doing for four years? <laughs> right. Gosh, yeah. Making your own. That's not as good. But I was having all of these questions of if this is so off putting to me, am I, in the right am I supposed to be and then all this stuff was happening you know with acting anyway which was crazy and and out of the blue and so all of that to say I have had a handful of speaking engagements 
um, within the last month or two that have been so refreshing that have been so rejuvenating that have made me remember scriptures always telling us to remember, 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 remember. Remember. And so that has been really um, exciting for me to kind of see it in a new way. um, Take the good, leave the bad and kind of start over in a way. Yeah. You'll get this next part because you're a speaker as well, but like, you know, I've spoken on waiting and hope, especially in Advent. Like, it's kind of the Advent thing. Like, sure. literally last year, the ministry that we did together, I gave the talk, and it was like, th- this was the base of the talk. But then I kind of sat there with my notes, and I was like, there's something more. Like, there's something new specifically with this yeah. year. And I was like, well, yeah. what, what is it? And it was so weird that I had never connected these two things. Like, uh, a lot of people might not know that I was a waiter th- my senior year of college and then my first year in grad school. First and only year in grad school because I dropped out. Um, but I waited tables and I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a good time. And I, but I never thought about the term. I never connected like my Christianity of waiting and hope with yeah. like my waiting of tables, <laughs> which is strange. Cause like, let's say like I, I'm waiting you and your husband's table, mm-hmm. right? Who is waiting yeah. for everything? I would say we are. You are. You are right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then the waiter is like waiting on the customers, right? Interesting. Yeah. And I, I think there's so often like the the thing like the kind of the primary point um, anytime I talk about hope is that like hope is an active word like anytime in Christianity or in like the Old Testament you know the precursor for Christianity um, whenever God says to hope or wait on the Lord he doesn't just mean like sit there and yeah. literally like sit on this spot and wait until I show up he's mm-hmm. no he's like like wait on the Lord as in continue praying continue doing yes. the things that I've already told you to do right. You know, continue living life, continue, uh, like, f- for us, it's like, continue uh, preaching, continue being a good parent, continue yes. or, uh, trying to be a good person. Yes. Like, like, like that's the waiting, right? Yeah. And, I, and I thought so much, like, any time, I, 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 I know I hear it, and I think a lot of people hear it in church when it's like, uh, like, hope doesn't mean what hope actually means. It's like, oh, I hope this will happen. You know, like, it would be like, I hope this person is president and then not, not going to vote for them. Or it would be like, mm. I, I, I hope... I hope I lose weight and never going to the gym or eating mm-hmm. better. You know, like, mm-hmm. that's not hope. That's literally nothing, Yeah. right? Yeah. But hope it's is... It's a wish. That's that, a genie wish. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, But, like, hoping is, like, I, I, I really want for, you know, like, f- to, to lose weight so I can be around longer for my family, so I can be healthier. And, and, like, hoping and asking God to help me with that, but also, like, doing my part, too, right? Yeah. So I thought about that a lot with, like, waiting and waiting tables, where it's, like, a lot of us... I think when it comes to hope, when it comes to being in bad situations, mm-hmm. we're doing the waiting like the customers. Or mm-hmm. we're just like, I really want, like, I guess the waiter is God in this scenario. Yeah. Like, I want the, you know, my guardian angel, the Holy Spirit, yeah. or whoever my waiter That's is, good. to come over and be like, here's your food. Mm-hmm. Now here's your money. Mm-hmm. Now here, here's your drinks. And continue filling me up when you're literally doing nothing. <laughs> like, right. Um, but like the waiter, the person who is waiting is the person who's like, what's, what's the goal? It's to get th- how these people have a good experience. I'm getting the food. I'm getting the order. Trying I to make it that. right. I'm trying to get their drinks right. I'm trying to like you yeah. know anything goes wrong. I'm trying to take care of it. Like that's the waiting that God is, is is talking to us for. So like here we are, Christmas week. We're like you know if you're listening to this on on Wednesday or Thursday, we're still waiting. Like it's Christmas yeah. is in a day or two. If you're listening later, it's Christmas. And like we said earlier, like. A lot of us have been waiting this year yeah. for it to all be over, right. for <clears throat> things to go back to normal, for things to be better. And, and I, th- I think it, like the, what struck me was like, as I was thinking about this, is like, am I waiting for things to get better like the person being waited on? Or like, yeah. I'm just twiddling my thumbs, literally yeah. waiting for them to come back. Or am I being active about yeah. it? Yeah. So there's a parable that Jesus told, and it was the persistent widow and the unrighteous judge. And so there's this judge who did not regard men I think it says he like he just wasn't a great guy and then there's this persistent widow who would show up all the time and ask for justice and she would ask and she would ask and she would ask for justice and then finally she ends up wearing him down and he says I can't take you any more woman like fine here and so a lot of people misinterpret the parable to mean that if we just keep asking we can wear God down well the unrighteous judge does not symbolize God because (laughs) God is obviously a very, you know, good, fair, um, man. But the, the parable is told in the context of a conversation where the disciples were asking, how long are we going to have to wait for you 
to come back. And so what Jesus is, the, the whole point of the parable is that this is how you wait. You wait with prayer. You wait with constant prayer. And so I think that there's that small scale waiting for the, you know, for the things that we hope for, for the things that we want, for the things that even we wish. And then there's that large scale waiting, um, for his return, which is peace and freedom and, you know, all of that. But, but to look to the persistent widow to know how to wait well, because I think a big tendency of ours is to make an idol out of whatever it is that we're waiting for. You know, so if you have something in mind and sitting around like an Xbox Series X, yes, yes. And then doing nothing until that thing happens, because all you can think about is that thing. And now you have your idolatry. I've been doing all of my work early (laughs) so that I can play my games this weekend. And I think that like the last part, I mean, we, I mean, we've probably heard this a thousand times in a homily, but it's like, you know, what are the three ra- waitings of Christmas? Like we're waiting for to celebrate Jesus is coming into the world the first time. We're waiting for him to come into our hearts, especially uh, uh, in a new way at Christmas. But then we're also waiting for that second coming, you know, right. uh, like you just mentioned. And it's like, unless, you know, in the next six days from when we record this, he actually shows up and it's all over and none of you ever hear this. So it doesn't matter anyway. Right. Like. We're still waiting for that, right? Yeah. And, like, it's one of those things that, like, Christmas is going to be lovely. Uh, like, just to experience that joy yeah. to, to kind of end this year would be mm-hmm. really nice. But, like, things are still going to be hard. Mm-hmm. And, like, I, I keep thinking of, like, Oh Holy Night, uh, like, the, the words of that. It's one of my favorite like, mm, lyrical too. songs ever. It's like, mm-hmm. long lay the world in sin mm-hmm. and error pining. On December 26th. We're still going to be a world in sin and error and pining, waiting, mm-hmm. like literally like desiring something to be new and to change and to, and to be better. Um, but yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. And it's like it was one which is interesting because it's like they're singing that on Oh Holy Night, on the holy night where it's literally the night where Jesus is born. But yonder breaks like over there. Yeah. A new and glorious morn. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to be better. So- soon. You know, yeah. soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Like it's going to get better, but not immediately. Yeah. Um. And I just think that's interesting. Like it's like yes, we're celebrating Jesus coming at Christmas, but we're still waiting. Like yeah. we're still waiting for him. To come back. I told um I told you at the beginning of the show I feel like I'm at the edge of tears and Oh Holy Nights is is what's going to do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but as we like, Holy Nights, I cannot I cannot add to this. Stars are I'll sway. <laughs> You're not crying. I just wanted you to cry. <laughs> This is the night. I told you this is bad radio. People start crying. It's bad radio. Long but hold on. If we're preparing him room. You're not crying. No, no. <laughs> the moment is gone. Um, but if we're preparing him room, I think that that's a really, really beautiful point that you're making. I, I, the waiter um, waiting of the tables is not going to leave me soon. But because if we're preparing him room, I kind of picture like that persistent widow sweeping the floor. It's like, yes, we're preparing him room, but we've got some cleaning to do. We've got, you know, there are things to make room for there are things to move around there are things to rearrange and reject and refine you know that's work well i'm glad i'm glad you were here i'm glad we had to uh, have this special with you and from all of us here at forte catholic merry christmas (laughs) merry christmas to all don't and to all a good night (laughs) i'm taylor stroll the Christmas gift that you can give me is to subscribe wherever you're listening uh, to the podcast. If you're listening on the radio, go subscribe. This is a podcast. It's on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Forte Catholic. That's the Christmas gift that you can give to me is to subscribe to all of that. Allison Sullivan. So, so I'm pr- mispronouncing everything because I'm purposely <laughs> doing it on some things and not others. Allison Sullivan, thanks for being here. Thank you, Taylor. And on the count of three, you know what to say. Three, one, two, three. Thirteen hundred dollars. Christmas. I'll be back next week. <laughs> say it. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>